So Kelvin van der Linde, who has done many a mile in one of these Audi R8s, knows exactly what he's doing in these cars. Remember, Louis Delatraz making his series debut. He was always going to do some races this year. Plans have changed a little bit, but he's the SRO GT eSports champion. Brilliant on a sim. Now he's got to do it for real. And rather than think about winning, he's got to try and make that car as wide as possible as they drop downhill. Tony Batser up the inside line. Goes van der Linde. Job done on the inside. These GT3 cars are physically large cars. This is an old school circuit. Now Marcello gets alongside the Ferrari. Two wheels almost on the grass. He's done the hard yards to get up alongside. He will have the higher ground coming down the hill into the Ravazza. Calado's not going to give it up, and he's going to have to find the long way around. Matt Campbell and the Porsche directly behind. He's going to try and now use that opportunity to move up one more place. So full course yellow we have had, and this is the reason why. It is number 44. Mercedes, which is Christian Hook out of Pro-Am, who's made a right mess of the exit of Rivazza. He's made a right mess of the tyre barrier and the Mercedes doesn't look too hot anymore, which is a shame because it's one of the smarter liveries. It's got a drive-through penalty. It will have to serve that next time around. That was massive disappointment. There we go. Kelvin van der Linde, again, strong into and out of, gets alongside the Mercedes. If he can maintain it as they go under the bridge, he'll be in the pine seat coming down in to the first of the Ravazza's Burger Vleski, trying to get his nose ahead, but has to concede two outstanding passes from Kelvin van der Linde at the same part of the racetrack. Alexander Jean and Seb Morris. It was Umbrescu that started. And how did he get there? Let us have a look. Coming out of Tosa, so he's probably booted it. There we go. Was the contact? Ah, oh, that's why the, that's Mercedes the Mercedes and the Bentley. We didn't see that in, in La oh. oh, and that was a big hit on the right front of the Bentley. Was it ever? There are the leaders coming up towards the line. Is this the lap they're about to start? On which Kelvin van der Linde goes for the race lead. A second was the margin. They break the timing beam, and it's down to 0.274 of a second. And van der Linde is going to have a go. Is he coming into the Tamburello chicane? Yes, oh, he, he is. Did. Through he, he goes. He did. He made the switch back. He was on the right hand side of the track. Collado went to cover that, and van der Linde dived down the inside, dived into the apex of the entry into, into Tamburello and took the lead away. Wow, wow, I'd love to see that one again, and again, and again. And a Mercedes is in the gravel, and, and that's, that's one of the Acker cars. It's 87, isn't it? The Jim Pla, Jean-Luc Berbalik, Fabian Barthez entry. Again, down to Ravazza, looks like he's been tagged. There it is, oh, not, not tagged. It was well and truly clipped the right rear, and that spun the Mercedes around. Probably hadn't even got onto the brakes. Oh. You can see the right rear already was down. Car riding off the barriers and still continuing. The sand or the gravel here is relatively soft in spite of all the heavy rain that fell. We have a drive-through penalty for Alvaro Parent in number nine of Bentley. He's dropped down the order anyway, but a drive-through penalty and not unexpected. Oh, oh Carlos Carimoje loses it was and he? all got a tag. I think you're on a the, tag. Yeah, he's not the only one in strife. Look, because we've had a spinning Aston Martin. Was that Valentin um, Asclo that has lost it? If it was, it's his silver cup lead possibly gone. So we don't know who started that, but the, the consequence clearly was the BMW was spun round. But everybody was so close, I mean, it was inevitable there was going to be a contact or other. That the back of the Barber Lamborghini is smoking now as well. Whether so that's a tyre up or something more serious. That's how Asclo had his spin. And that's the left front of the Lamborghini. Yeah. This was from another angle. That was Carrie Moje having his moment with a bit of help. And as cars scatter, it's, it's like, down to luck, isn't it? It's just like a game of Skittles. I yeah. mean, literally, if you can get 10 in one bowl, you've done the, the best I've you can. I've not just got to pan, find a way past one car. I've got two cars that are in an inter-car battle. And look, I mean, Alvaro Prent again trying to use the pace down oh! the hill. Oh, Alvaro, what are you doing? Unnecessary. You, it was never going to be a pass. It was inevitable there was going to be a collision. It was Schiller's corner, and you've just completely bleep, 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 bleeped it up. Let's look again and see... Down the inside. No, well, there's no chance. I mean, it actually, Parent couldn't slow the car down. He wasn't even anywhere near the car. It just, it didn't have the capacity to slow down. Wits instantly, look, gets up onto the back pretty much of the traffic ahead to Andy Suchak, who's attacking Delatraz. Perhaps more vigorously than ever. Might be caught by Wits in a moment, but finally, because he's not having to defend too much, Suchak can attack, but he's on the outside line. Into Piratella, does he go through there? No, he doesn't. And here comes Charles Wits. Suchak is still attacking all the way around the outside. If he stands his ground, he'll have the inside for the Aqua Minerali. Fantastic! Andy Suchek has done it after about half an hour plus of trying.